composite materials uh, present a much wider range of, of uh, uh, variables to play with as an engineer. Ian Farrow, lecturer in aircraft structural design. The first year of the uh, composite CDT at Bristol, uh, one of the major units is the design, build and test units and uh, that allows the students to uh, get experience in this. We give them a, a set of requirements in terms of structural requirements and manufacturing targets. By the end of the project, um, they go through design, build and test phases. Uh, they might find at the end that their predictions don't quite match uh, the uh, measured results, uh, but that just adds to the learning, and at the end of the day, learning should be fun. This year involved the manufacture of a 1.5 metre UAV box spar, with the constant width along the span and the linear taper towards the tip, all made out of carbon fibre. Eileen Etienne previously studied aerospace engineering. The beam is required to withstand an impact load of 15 joules at any position and not exceed a tip deflection of 150 millimeters at one and a half tons. There were three stages involved in this process. The first one was the design based on the requirements, followed by manufacture of the design and lastly testing in order to evaluate whether the requirements were met. To get a more optimized design of the beam, we need more accurate determination of the material properties. Jagan Selvaraj, structural engineer. Right now we are testing the specimen in tension. In this test, the specimen will be pulled apart and the results will be used in the finite element analysis to get an accurate design. The actual loading condition of the wing spar beam is a complex loading case. We are also testing the composite specimen in compression, shear, also with open hole to get the stress concentration factor. After the material testing, we got the material properties that we used for the initial end calculation. Riccardo Manu, and previously I was studying aerospace engineering. This end calculation gave us uh, an idea of the design, of the des first design that we use it for um, a finite element analysis. Uh, this we use Abacus because um, it gave, uh, it enabled us to have a, a quicker and uh, more efficient way to try different cases of stacking sequence and ply orientation. This in order to find uh, the, be the optimum way of designing our build. We are down in the clean room and we are making a UAV box bar out of carbon fiber reinforced with uh, epoxy. Usman Sekander, previously studied material science and engineering. Uh, you can see it's quite a soft material, so the whole idea over here is to wrap it around a particular mold to obtain a desired geometry. And once it is wrapped around and you have the geometry in the uncured state, then you put it into the oven to cure it, to solidify the material. And once it is cured, you can see over here that it looks something like this, which is quite a nice uh, rigid part that is consolidated. So we've just taken our cured beam out of the autoclave and we're going to be moving on to the next part of our manufacturing. Imad Ushin, previously studied chemistry. We're going to be trimming our beam down to size and machining holes where we can attach it to the fixture. Uh, afterwards, we're going to be conducting some mechanical tests on the beam where we're going to place it in a whiffle tree arrangement and apply four loads, causing it to deflect. And we're going to be measuring tip deflection, tip rotation, and how it fails. It's taken us a long time to get here, so I hope it goes well. Behind me we have the final uh, setup of our testing program for our DBT test. We have the full test rig here that we're setting up on. This is just done through this whiffle tree loading here to kind of give a distributed load instead of a single point load. And so once the loading is underway, we then need a method to really work out um, what's going on and how to measure it. We have the video gauge system down here, which really helps to kind of te test the displacement and the rotation of the beam as we go and as we load it. We have the high-speed camera here, which refocuses really on the actual breaking point of the beam, so we can see in real slow motion how the beam breaks and how it fails. And we've also got strain gauges across the beam um, as well to help kind of measure everything that's happening uh, during the test. So we're 
halfway through testing now. Uh, we loaded the beam until ultimate loading, which was 1.5 kilonewtons, and since it didn't fail, we're now carrying out some impact tests. So this should create some defects, and after this, we'll then load it again um, until failure. As a chemist, everything was really new to me, uh, so we were learning a lot of stuff in theory. At the start, it was very challenging. Yeah, I didn't know many of things when I got here. It was difficult to understand why they might use different um, orientations of plies, for example. You, you get quite a big variety of personalities. For all of us, it was a fantastic learning experience because now we, we all now know how to do that in the future or at least have some level of experience in the future. That can aid you to go into an industrial problem, let's say. It was really interesting to see how our predictions matched um, the actual final breaking of the beam. DBT actually helped me to put things into practice, understand why we're doing these things and how you could apply them to manufacturing. Very good. Uh, exposure for non-engineers to uh, tackling engineering problems. If you want to go into the constant field and do research in this, it will aid you a lot. So for anybody who wants to make that transition, this is definitely the project to go for.